Good day engineers. So ngayon itutuloy natin yung discussion on the analysis of singly reinforced beam. So natapos tayo on our step 4.A and step 4.B.1 which is na determine na natin yung uh, distance from the extreme compression fiber to the zero strain which is yung C. Ngayon we will now determine the depth of the compression block gamit yung nakuha nating C from this step. So, ibig sabihin, ang gagamitin lang natin doon is yung A is equal to beta 1C. So, from that one, ito ngayon yung ating depth of compression block. Then, upon getting the depth of compression block and yung distance from the zero strain, which is yung, uh, which is yung C, So ngayon, pwede na nating i-determine yung possible na actual value nung FS natin which will come from still dun sa 600 times D minus C over C. So syempre since na-correct mo na yung value nung FS mo dito, so ibig sabihin may chances na hindi na talaga magi-yield on this part kapag binerify natin yung value ni actual FS compared to the FY so for this part mababalidate na natin na not yielding at yung mga nakompute na nating values ng C at ng A is we can say na siya na yung actual values or the true values now After verifying the yielding of steel and getting the actual values of A, C, and the actual steel stresses, so we can now proceed to step number 5 which is determining the net tensile strain. So dito, alam natin na napakahalaga ni, de, uh, ni net tensile strain kasi ito yung magde-dictate what will be our reduction factor. So syempre, from our previous uh, topic or from our previous video pinakita ko kung paano na derive yung net tensile strain or yung equation ng net tensile strain gamit yung strain diagram so syempre pwede nyo pa rin gamitin yun yung equation na derive na yun pero much better if you are using this diagrams para dito na lang natin i-substitute directly yung mga values na kailangan natin i-substitute So, syempre, nanggaling lang naman yun sa strain, uh, strain diagram which is, syempre, alam natin that this one is C. Then, alam din natin that this will be DT minus C. Kasi, ang gamit natin dito is yung epsilon sub T. Kung yung dun sa step 4, ang gamit natin is epsilon sub S. So, dito, we will be using that is 0.003 divided by C is equal to epsilon sub T divided by DT minus C. So, it's like the ratio and proportion part. So, our epsilon sub T now will just be equivalent to 0.003 DT minus C over C. And pwede rin natin gamitin yung epsilon sub T is equal to FST over ES. Then, substituting yung FST over ES dun sa equation na na-derive natin, we can get FST over ES is equal to 0.003 DT minus C over C. Para kung gusto lang natin ma-determine yung stress dun sa extreme tension reinforcement or dun sa pinakamalayong reinforcement or the first layer reinforcement. So, that is FST is now equal to, so syempre, dadalhin natin doon si ES, substitute na rin natin yung 200,000 megapascal. So, that is 0.003 times 200,000 times DT minus C over our C. So, our FST now will just be equivalent to 600 times DT minus C over C. So, kung makuha man natin yung stress dito, pwede natin siyang i-divide ulit by ES para makuha si epsilon sub T or yung net tensile strain natin. So, that will be for step number 5. Then, for our step number 
we have to determine the value of the reduction factor by the NSCP 2015 provision. So, dito papasok yung epsilon t and epsilon t sub y. So, kailangan natin i-compare silang dalawa. So, ibig sabihin, if that is epsilon t, tapos that is lesser than or equal to epsilon t sub y, so, sabi natin, ito yung compression controlled. So, ang reduction factor natin dyan is equal to a value 0.65. Then, kapag ang epsilon sub t natin or epsilon t sub y is much lesser to our epsilon sub t and our epsilon sub t is lesser than 0.005 nandun tayo sa transition zone so ibig sabihin a reduction factor will be equivalent to 0.65 to 0.9 pero syempre we will use the equation indicated the N in the NSCP 2015 or kung hindi ka bisado just use the equation of the line to get the equation for the reduction factor as well as the reduction factor itself. So lastly, kapag ang epsilon sub t natin is greater than or equal to 0 0.005, that is the tension controlled. So ito yung basis ng lahat ng designs natin. Kapag design yung topic natin, so that will be, our reduction factor will be equal to 0 0.9. So that will be step number 6. So, for step number 7, dito na natin i-determine yung nominal moment capacity of the given beam by the stress diagram. So, dito kasi, as you can see, we have a couple force. And this couple force will produce a moment due to their moment arm D minus A over 2. So, ibig sabihin, and from my previous discussion, sabi ko nga, ang ipuproduce lagi ng stress diagram is a moment known as the nominal moment, which is MN. So, nominal pa lang siya, hindi pa siya ultimate kasi hindi pa natin minumultiply to the certain reduction factor na nakuha natin from step number 6. So, the nominal moment can be... Uh, can be produced or makukuha natin through the compression force so that is compression force times the moment arm d minus a over 2 or it can also be produced through the tension force times the moment arm d minus a over 2 so dyan ngayon natin pwedeng makuha yung nominal moment capacity nung beam natin so kapag ginamit natin yung compression force we could have c which is 0.85 F prime C A times B times D minus A over 2. So, this is an equation for a rectangle beam lang. Pag iba na yung shape ng beam, hindi na siya AB. Magbabago na kasi yung area ng beam doon and hindi na natin pwedeng gamitin basta-basta si A at yung base ng beam natin. Then, next... Kapag naman gagamitin natin yung tension force, ito lang yung magiging note, just be careful in using the tension force. So, kapag nandun ka sa part na steel yields, we can use AS FY times D minus A over 2. So, FY kasi, the steels are yielding. So, dito, ginagamit lang siya if steels are proven yielding. E, paano kung Nandun ka sa step 4 and na-prove mo that steels are not yielding. So, we could use MN is equal to AS FS times D minus A over 2. So, the steels dito are not yielding. So, just be careful in using the uh, tension forces. So, kaya napakahalaga na kinukuha natin lagi yung actual steel stress kasi possible na gamitin natin siya kapag steels are not yielding. By the way, kapag steels are yielding, automatically ang ginagamit natin for our equations will be the FY or 
the yield strength of the steel. So for our last step, we have to determine the ultimate moment capacity of beam by the multiplying the nominal moment strength to the strength reduction factor. So this will just be the simplest one. We will just use or we could attain the ultimate moment capacity of the beam by just multiplying our reduction factor to our nominal moment. And that's it. That is the uh, ultimate moment of the beam and that will be the analysis for the singly reinforced beam. So for our next video, we will be having the design of singly reinforced beam as well as the sample problems for the analysis of singly reinforced beam. That will be all for this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Butch TV.